Greenland, one of the last great wildernesses on Earth. Considered to be the world's largest island, Greenland extends out over 2.2 million square kilometers and spans nearly 24 latitudes north to south. 80% is covered by a massive continuous ice sheet and has proven to be the ultimate testing ground for the planet's polar explorers. Ian Finch, former Royal Marine Commando, is about to embark on one of life's grand adventures. Facing brutal Arctic weather, Ian and a small team will attempt a 190 km dog sled expedition in four days to explore East Greenland and one of the few remaining native cultures still thriving in a hostile environment, the Inuit. Kulasuk, a small island formerly known as Cap Dan, is a settlement in the Semasuk municipality in southeastern Greenland. Kulasuk was uninhabited until the early 1900s and today boasts an Inuit population of only 267 people. Only hunters, their families and their dogs inhabit this small island. Read a book by Ranulf Fiennes about his Arctic expeditions and how he was training for his North and South Pole challenges and he was speaking of Greenland in such a poetic, beautiful way. Um, and as soon as I, I read those words from Renal Fiennes, I, I fell in love with the idea of going to Greenland. I fell in love with the, the idea of seeing the culture and for what it was. And I just was transfixed on the idea of going. Dog power has been used for hunting and travel for over a thousand years. It's an animal the Inuit depend on day to day. In Greenland, dogs have contributed to human culture and in winter, has been the only way to successfully negotiate through and survive such a hostile environment. The expedition team spend two days learning how to assemble a dog team and understand the crucial roles each dog plays in the pack. The initial training day was forged over the frozen sea ice and gave the team vital time to acclimatise to the Arctic environment and to bond as an efficient team before the journey begins. Often in Greenland, weather is extremely unpredictable. Its proximity to the ocean means erratic weather patterns frequently fracture the imposing silence. On day two, the decision was made, due to hazardous conditions, to halt the expedition team and continue the training and preparation. As the weather settles, conditions are perfect in Kulasuk, and the expedition team are given the green light. So we'll the After a brief from the expedition leader, the group divides into two, one hunter and ten dogs per team. With preparations complete, they leave the frozen shores of the community. The journey to Camp 1 was mind-blowingly beautiful. We travelled, um, it was about nine kilometres an hour on the sledge, which is an average pace for the dogs and we were travelling across the frozen fjords and either side of us for the whole journey was high mountainous peaks and it was a clear blue sky, it was just unbelievable. A strong team of dogs can travel up to 30 miles a day pulling a single sledge with a load of 900 pounds. Their endurance and dedication to running, even when tired, reflects the bond between humans and dogs in the Arctic. There was one guy from Seattle called Karthik who had moved from India to Seattle to follow his dreams and he had found himself in Greenland with me and with the group on the trip and he was opening himself up to new experiences. You don't get days like this every day, this wonderful, brilliant day. He inspired me by being a calm and patient and an open person and, and a very receptive person to instructions and, and what was going on around him. Ian and the team arrive at their first overnight location, Tinnatikalak, an isolated spot 30 kilometres north and three hours travelling time from Kulusuk. The temperature is plummeting and the team dig into a snowdrift to offer protection for the tents. They settle down for the cold night ahead. It's been probably one of the most memorable days of my life. Um, we've travelled by dogs today about 30 kilometres and I can only say it's some of the most pristine and unbelievable scenery I've ever seen. And it's just been breathtaking. I can't 
say anything more than that. The expedition team rises from bitter nighttime temperatures. Conditions are clear, but the cold has a savage bite. The scenery, like an empty Arctic moonscape, has something new to offer each time the sun rises. Today the group head 50 kilometers north to Similigak, a highly remote Inuit settlement on a peninsula on Greenland's east coast. Here they intend to explore the settlement and learn more about the Inuit culture and way of life. Similigak is a very, very remote Inuit community on the east side of Greenland. And when we arrived there, it was incredible to see some of the villagers and local Inuit hunters standing watching us come in. But once we got into the village, we were surrounded by bands, mischievous children, um, and we also had a really fantastic tour of the village as well, which was, which was incredible. But we spent about two hours there. Um, we spent some time in the local community centre. But most of the time I was really exploring and getting a feel for what Similigak was like. And also one of our Inuit hunters visited his family there that he hadn't seen in six months. At least one daughter living here, um, at least, I think a couple, and some of his own brothers. Um, so it's pretty nice for him to, to have a journey over here and catch up with family. What are you looking for? It was a, a beautiful village. All the houses are set up on the hillside overlooking the fjords, or the frozen fjords that we were travelling across. As the team return over the frozen pack ice from Sumilagak, every member of the group has the chance to reflect on how the Inuit culture still thrives to this day. A quiet time in the sledges is always time of reflection. It was moving about eight kilometers an hour, but it was incredibly, incredibly cold. We had to wrap up all our hands, our faces, get the glasses on. It's uh, amazing to see uh, a culture and a community um, that have settled so far uh, up in Greenland, um, that are so remote and so detached from everything. The expedition team rises to another clear but dangerously cold day. After morning routines are complete and the dogs are ready, they proceed on the sledges 43 kilometers southwest to a location known as the Hunter's Hut. The cabin is a man-made insulated wooden structure that was built in the mid-80s. This would be their midway stop-off before the return to Kulasuk the following day. As the expedition reached the one-hour point, the already brutal temperature takes a sudden nosedive and the Arctic winds begin to show their teeth. Prior to beginning the journey on the third day, the hunters expressed concerns that a pitterack, a fierce Greenlandic storm, was imminent in the area. As the minutes and miles pass by, the weather deteriorates along with the temperatures. As the expedition team arrive at their location, the conditions continue to decline. They are immediately tasked to dig the tents in build a strong protective snow wall before the storm and temperatures become too dangerous. We had to build a snow wall around the tents to protect the tents because they would have literally blown down in this, this Greenlandic storm. Um, and it was really tough going because the temperatures were really cold. Some of the people that I was with as well hadn't been exposed to that kind of temperature and trying to think clearly and, and stay as a team in that kind of temperature as well. So we had to really come together as a group and work on our strengths and, 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 and work as a team to get that job done. It was very difficult at times to deal with the, the extreme temperature. It seeps into every part of your clothing, into your gloves, into your socks. It, 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 it closes you down, the cold temperature, and as to those moments, you've got to stay focused, you've got to stay in the moment, and you've got to remember what you've been taught. The expanse of the environment and being in the face of extreme conditions can make some people reflect on the important factors about life, its direction, and fear. My biggest fear is not reaching my potential. I believe that every person out there has boundless potential but when you look in the mirror you have to acknowledge your own potential your own uniqueness your own greatness if you don't do that i believe we limit ourselves in life
The expedition team awakens to a snowed-in location. As the storm ravaged through the night, the Arctic winds spared the team, blowing through to leave a clear but bitterly cold last day for the 15-kilometer route back to Kulasov. Once more, the journey home is a quiet time of reflection, a lasting moment to take in such a vast environment that even in a modern world is still connected to such a rare and ancient culture. I remember thinking when I was going back, this would be my last opportunity to really take in what was around me. And it was an incredible opportunity just to reflect and actually get a chance to speak to some of the people on the sledge about their experience as well. Um, and we all agreed that it was a life-changing experience. When you're on that last leg of coming home, you start to think about the good things you're coming home to, a warm shower, warm food, a warm bed. And, and those are, I remember thinking those are things I was really looking forward to. And, and when we come back into the village and then the moment that I was exposed to that warm food and the warm shower, I longed to be back out on the sledge. I felt a sadness. I felt a sadness because I left a little bit of me out there on that sledge, out on that ice. And I guess it will be forever left there. Sometimes I feel that fear and things in life stop us from going out there and really taking life by the scruff of the neck and exploring it and exploring what life means to us. It's the end of an extraordinary journey. The team traveled 190 kilometers through some of the remotest and naturally diverse terrain anywhere in the world. They came here to experience a way of living, to gain a new perspective and to draw inspiration for life from a different source. What they gained was a new horizon. If you can get yourself into a, an environment like that, it, you, you will come back a changed person. There's no two ways about it, you'll come back a changed person because you it makes you reflect on what is out there in the world and the beauty that is in the world. And the only thing that's stopping us getting to somewhere like that is us.